Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Bogey Proof. The staff is a little bit lean this week. We just got Joey and myself, Mike. Eric and Matt have uh, taken a little time off uh, to focus on work obligations and some other fun stuff going on in their life. So just the two of us, but Joseph, it's great. Me and you chatting a little golf, chatting life, having a couple cocktails. That's what it's all about. It's all, it's all it's what, it, it's what it means in life, you know? Yeah. So speaking of cocktails, are you sipping on anything down there in Florida? I am. I'm still on the Mickable Ultra uh, Seltzer uh, train. Still still have those lying around. I don't have a drink too often other than these occasions. So we're going to let this rock until uh, I run out of them and then we'll go from there. But uh, Mikey, what about you, buddy? I'm back again with the with the California Pinot Noir this week. A little bit different one. So this one's a little sweeter, I would say. So not kind of that that normal just like light yeah. uh, red wine taste but definitely definitely taste some berries in here and a couple other things so kind of a little I, funky I have have but some red wine in a while i gotta get myself a bottle soon yeah yeah we're do, we're due you know when we when we connect this spring we're due for a nice dinner and a couple nice bottles of red wine that's I, that, I, that's I what we're gonna do that. i could agree with that but <laughs> there's a lot of uh last week was a is an interesting week of golf um, out there in Pebble Beach, always fun to to see the guys play Pebble Beach and a couple of highlights up at Spyglass on on Thursday and Friday. But it was exciting from the start. I gotta say, right? We had we had our man Jordan Spieth, yeah, uh, making plays from the beginning. I know you were you were pretty excited Absolutely. Thursday and Friday. So Absolutely. yeah, what, what were you thinking? Yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch too much of the coverage Sunday. You know, I got to watch, and of of course, you know, Jordan. Uh, you know, a lot of people, some people are saying he choked and I don't, you know, I don't want to necessarily say he choked, you know, he still played relatively well. What did he end up shooting that day? Was it, was he two under, I want to say, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Maybe one under. I, I, yeah, I can't. Kind of along those lines. So, you know, he, I mean, he, he still played good and he's, you know, kept it all together. Right. And that's what we're kind of looking for at this moment. I mean, yeah, I know I picked him, but in a way, I mean, you, you still kind of just think it might be a little too soon when it, but you know, I, 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 you know, he's due, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. And I mean, he definitely could have this past weekend, but he just like, you know, he, he was saying he, he had his B game, right. He didn't have his A game on the, on that last day. So just goes to show like, you know, he's, his mindset's a lot better than it was. So I, you know, I, as a big fan of Jordan enjoy seeing that going forward and, you know, staying on this California swing with him. I think it's got a lot of, um, you know, a lot of potential for him and, hopefully he can continue to strike the ball well and get the putts go in the hole and hopefully he gets more birdie putts to fall in. But, you know, overall I was very happy to see how he played. And like I've said before, I'm just excited to see him going forward. And I think he's going to peak just in time for Augusta. If our, if our, if our guy, you know, the big cat doesn't do it. So, uh, you know, a lot of good things from Jordan Spieth, but you know, besides that Daniel Berger, shout out to him. Guy just had a set of balls played well how about him saying he had you know I think he was saying playing you know leading in the in the final round is like having a heart attack on every single hole and I just I found that so funny and you know the way he just drained that eagle to finish a tournament I mean that's off to him and it was it was a lot of good golf this weekend um even Maverick Manali right with that club twirl on 18 with a three iron I mean it was just some exciting golf to watch it's just a little unfortunate that my boy Jordan couldn't really contend on Sunday but it is what it is it was a great tournament I think you know Daniel Berger won it very well and I think we got a lot of good golf in the future and I'm excited to watch and excited for the you know the weekend to come up but what were your what were your thoughts on the tournament yeah I agree and I watched quite a bit this weekend um I thought Jordan Spieth was was definitely impressive the first first few days and um the way he finished out that Saturday or the the Friday afternoon round um, after kind of, he was just kind of stalled out a little bit when he was playing, playing spyglass. Um, I think right. Two straight weeks, 54 hole lead or, or a share of the lead. That's yeah. it's tough to find a, you know, something to, to really dig into, yeah. um, when, when it comes to the way he played, um, you know, six out of the last eight rounds, I mean, it's best player in the field, six out of the eight, last eight rounds. I think, um, that says something there. So, um, Agreed. Excited for for him to kind of finish off this this West Coast swing and then get to Florida. And we know how comfortable he is playing in Texas and then into the the Masters. So yeah. looking forward to to watching him play. 
Agreed. Berger, the way he, I mean, the way he played down the stretch. And I think he fin- he had like four or five Eagles this weekend too, I think. Four Eagles, yeah. Okay. Four Eagles and, you know, Saturday hitting one on four and knocking in the butt and then doing it on two. And then, um, you know, on the, on the par five and the, what was it? I'm trying to remember what they did. Oh yeah. 18, obviously. Yeah, so yeah. I think, um, you know, kind of bookending his round with the, with the two Eagles that's, you know, comes out and, and plays well at the beginning and then finishes it off. Yeah. He's been playing some of the best golf of, of anyone on tour yeah. realistically the last I mean, how he year. Playing, but man, hats off to him. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting, right? We, we, everyone kind of talks about how ugly the swing is at times, but fundamentally there's some issues I, I, I agree to, but at the end of the day, right. He kind of gets in the same position. He rotates hard and he yeah. it's the same flight. Like, <clears throat> and that's kind of what most amateur golfers should probably be thinking about, like yeah, find a flight and a path swing. that works for you and go for it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a lot of people that in the, you know, on tour that kind of show that. And I don't think many people understand, you know, that it's okay to have a little bit of a different swing. And I think it's good to, you know, have players like that up on top of the leaderboard to show the rest of the world that. Yeah. And I just, our listeners out there, I mean, if, if you haven't seen Daniel Berger's girlfriend, she, she is enough to to <laughs> fight every Sunday uh, on the golf course for So What's her name again? I got to look her up again. I, I can't, I can't remember her name off the top of her head, but I uh, top of my head, but um, beautiful girl. And uh, we need a, we need a little bit more, of her out there on the coverage. I know COVID's causing some problems and um, I think they live in Florida, but Tory Slater, Tory Slater. Yeah. But uh, yeah, burger was fun to watch and Mav McNeely getting it done. And um, I think we'd be remiss to not talk about what happened on the 16th green. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. So Nate Lashley yeah. four putt from 13, 14 feet, I believe it was, or, um, after, you know, I think the underrated part of that, and I was watching this live, was he had 152 from the fairway. And I don't know what they were calculating or whatever, but he hit an iron right at the flag, and it, it just was too much club. Yeah. Um. So I don't know who his caddy is, but he's probably going to have to to swallow that one. And uh, obviously going after hitting a not-so-great pitch and then trying to trying to make the putt and a couple, couple lip-outs there. Yeah, it wasn't. It was not great to see, but understandably so, right? He, yeah. he had an opportunity yeah. to win the tournament, and at the end of that hole, he didn't. So, yeah, no, exactly. I mean, most you know some relatable golf right there, right? I mean, I think we've all kind of been there, so it's good to see the pros do something like that. I mean, even Francesco Molinari topped one right off on the first tee. I think it was on Saturday, something like that. But yeah, it's fun to see relatable people like that. But I mean, going back to Lashley, yeah, I. Tough break for the guy. Um, I know I kind of just mentioned to you earlier, I mean, in, in a way, you know, his life story and everything that kind of happened to him in the past, which, you know, we won't get into. I wasn't fully aware of that at the time. I kind of just forgot about it. And so, you know, I was, I was kind of happy to see a leader like that kind of just fall down the leaderboard because I was so, you know, hoping for a miracle with Jordan, but Afterwards, when I found out that, you know, I, re, you know, I remembered and reminded what Nate Lashley's story was, you know, I kind of felt a little more bad for the guy, but he still played some solid golf and hopefully he'll be able to piece, piece some things together for, uh, you know, the season to come up as well. So it was a tough look for the guy, but it's golf. It yeah, happens. he's he's been around actually the last few weeks too, and he's playing yeah. some decent golf. So um, I wouldn't expect it. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't expect I wouldn't expect you know a, one bad hole and and one you know inopportune four putt to really affect his you know season going forward. Right, he was no, exactly. he was a winner only a couple of years ago, and he's playing good golf. Yeah, he's he's going to be there for the rest of the year. I think he's kind of supplanted himself um, as a regular on tour, and yeah. looking forward to him playing some better golf uh, and you know finishing the finishing the deal down the stretch. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but I just want to um, give a little plug for, for all our different platforms here at, at Bogey Proof. Um, we're kind of creating experience across all these different and right in, in our podcasts are one thing and our blog is another and, and Twitter and, and Instagram, they're all slightly different. Obviously hoping that the 
the ideas and the, the things that we say across are, are somewhat universal, but we're creating a different experience on each of them. So just kind of want to put that plug out there. So on Twitter, guys, go out there and, and follow us at bogeyproof, Instagram bogeyproof as well. So that's bogeyproof gram, bogeyproofblog.com. We're on YouTube. Just go out there and search bogeyproof and subscribe in our channels and like our videos. Um, Twitch, we're also, so we're going to kick that up a little bit more and do some more videos and and hopefully get some some people interacting, so bogey proof on Twitch. And then uh, I know many of you guys listen to our podcasts, and, and that's what we're doing right now. Those can be found on Spotify and Apple Music. Let us know if, if you know if you're listening to it on one thing, but you're kind of transitioning and you like a, another platform. Let us know, and we can try to get our podcast up on other things. And um, if you have friends that don't do streaming services, though I know that's kind of odd in, in this day and age, let us know. Send us a DM and. And we'll get you a, a video or a recording. We just want more people to kind of hear what we're doing and um, hopefully relate to some of the things we're saying. But Joey, not really, you know, outside of outside of golf being played out there on the West Coast, there's there's not a whole heck of a lot going. So I think we kind of just dive right into the next week. But in order to get down to Los Angeles into the Gen- Genesis Invitational, mm-hmm. we got to travel down down highway one route one all the way uh from from pebble to la so what are we doing we, we're stopping at we're stopping at hertz we're start stopping at avis what car are we picking up when what is this road trip looking like kind of kind of you know set the stage for me and then maybe i'll give my insight on it or maybe i'll just hop in the back seat and play along yeah no so i mean me personally obviously we're you know we're just talking rental cars so I've always wanted a Jeep Wrangler, something that I've always, you know, the, the car I've always wanted, just haven't bought one or got one because it's just not the right time. I'm also a big fan of the Broncos on the record, but I'm thinking the Jeep for this one, you know, two door Jeep Wrangler. Top's got to be down, obviously going, um, you know, just enjoying the scenery as best we can, enjoying the drive. And as far as music goes, you know, I've, I've expressed that my music taste is, I mean, it's all over the place and I know while you guys usually would probably go with country, I, I mean, being in California, I mean, I feel like I'm just going to go old school Biggie, honestly, you know, I mean, I just, Biggie and Tupac just kind of feel like that fit the mood for me, but, you know, throwing, throwing some country music here and there, it's a little bit of a long drive, so we can, uh, we can change things up here and there, but I mean, down the way, you got to stop at an in and out never had, got to have it, you know, got to try it at least once, so definitely stop in there, and uh, I'm sure I would try to find some courses along the way that I know I am not too familiar with right now, but if that was an actual situation, I'd be doing my research and I'd find a nice little course to go play. So, I mean, I think that'd be my little trip down, you know, down to the Genesis open, but, uh, yeah, you know, something simple. I I, I don't need too much. Stop at some bars, see some, meet some people and, uh, enjoy a good time. What about you, Mike? Are you joining me? I mean, I think just, just for the sake of the discussion, I'll, I'll do my own, but that, that sounds like a lot of fun to me. I think hopping into a Jeep Wrangler and um, throwing the clubs in the back and yeah. right. If we, if we see a good view or, or something, we stop and, and we check it out. If we see a golf course on Google, like on the, you know, just off the highway or a sign for something, yeah, we pull off and we make it happen. Go, yeah. Right. And I, right. It's not too crazy of a drive. Um, so I you think we kind of take our time, right? Like so, we don't really need to be there for Monday or Tuesday. Like we, we just take our time and we play some golf and we enjoy the views and I've never been surfing before. So I think that might be on my list. To maybe All right, we could add that to okay. try, to try it out. Um, I, I think I'm either going to go with some sort of convertible sports car or like maybe just switch it up. Maybe we're going like uh Winnebago type of deal. And we're, and we're throwing that on the back, um, silver bullet. And, uh, you know, we got someone driving, so maybe we're just, we're hanging out in the back and we're playing a little music. We got right. You, you talked about, it. I think we got to go West coast a little bit. We got to go Tupac. We got to go real yeah. deep. We got to go like beach. We got to go like beach boys. Like oh, we got to have, boys, you we got to have that. everything. Yeah. Um, it's not like you so can think, have one, one, you know, one artist. Now you got to have a nice little mixtape going. We'll leave Eric up to that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, Eric's not on this podcast right now, but uh, I'm. I yeah, just wrote down a quick little note to to have him create us a playlist. I know he, you know, he's not part of this this uh, 
discussion right now. So I'm not sure we're going to really allow him to come, uh, <laughs> but he can, he can supply the yeah, Spotify yeah, playlist cool. for us and, and we'll let him know how, how much fun we're having. But yeah, I, th- I think too, I think an opportunity to surf would be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. um, I spent a little bit of time in LA. Uh, one of my roommates here in Chicago is from, from LA originally. Um, so spent a week out there with him a couple of years ago. Um, but I think if we find a little beach bar or we find yeah. like uh, a place that does some fish tacos or something like that, that's, that's what we got to do. Um, I don't know if they have them way up North, but Wahoo fish tacos, I know no free ads here on, on bogey proof, but that, that stuff is really good. Um, yeah, right. So yeah, I think I'm doing that on the way down and just enjoying the views and, I think it's it's a little sketchy sometimes on Highway One. We I spent a little time in San Francisco too, and went down to Monterey and, and Big Sur. And uh, if you're driving, like you kind of got to focus on driving because it's some steep cliffs uh, out over the ocean. So um, I think that's another thing, right? If if we had an opportunity and had money and it didn't really matter, yeah. maybe someone that could drive us that we could kind of just chill in the back seat and enjoy the views and change the music. Um, you know, so that's, that's another thing to think about too. Uh, but no, yeah, what were you gonna say? I said noted. That's all. <laughs> noted, noted. Yes. Uh, but once we get down to LA, I, I think we got a, we got a fun week ahead. We got the Genesis invitational, um, 120 players this week was 121, but, uh, Daniel Berger, quick, uh, quick WD. So Respect. there's, got, there's just something in the water about when you win the week before that, you just booze too hard, yeah. you know, you buy something and you just, you don't want to play the next week. Is, is, is that what's going on? Or is, you know, is he feeling a little ill? What, what's going on? No, I mean, he's, you know, I mean, I feel like I would do the same thing really, you know, you just you celebrate a little too much. You tell yourself, all right, you can afford to take a week off unless it's a, you know, a huge tournament. So, you know, I, the dude loves to fish and go out on his boat. So now he's probably just saying, Hey, I deserve, a boat day I, you know something along those lines i i think he earned the right to take that weekend off but uh you know granted as big as a tournament may be might not have been the best decision right but I, I like i said i think he earned it so uh good for him i hope he's enjoying his time off and i'm sure he'll get right back to it as you know next weekend yeah no no for sure um i'm sure he'll be back and, and playing some good golf but genesis invitational at the riv Riviera Riviera Golf Club or Riviera Country Club. Country Club. I'm not 100 percent sure to be perfectly honest. But Pretty sure it's Country Club, but I Country Club. Yeah, I mean it's bougie, it's bougie as hell. It's got to be Country Club, it's right? Got to be. Um, in the Palisades there. So great golf course. Probably the I'm gonna say a top five golf course on tour as far as you know what all the players say, how difficult it is, the mm-hmm. location. I think this is this is one of the favorite spots. Um, obviously the, the whole invitation will being run by the Tiger Woods foundation adds to it, right? You get put Tiger Woods, name in, in anything and, and the field yeah. level, the yeah. purse, everything's going to be, you know, up, up, up. So, but Riviera, I think from start to finish iconic golf course, tight fairways, cuckoo grass, smallish greens, but just difficult and firm greens too. Yeah. I, I think we see things here that we don't see a lot of other places like um right there's the there's the sixth hole i believe that has the the bunker in the middle of the green but it's not like the one that's in texas that's kind of like yeah you know not really even in play and it's just kind of like makes four different greens out of it like yeah you, we see every single year people hitting like cut chip shots like around like yeah. off the green and you know around the bunker and and whatever the case may be so I, you know we see a lot of really interesting things here at riv like um, and I just think it, it comes with the territory, right? Being an invitational in the field being so strong, like mm-hmm. with the firepower that's in the field, like it's a very documented tournament and there's eyes everywhere. Yeah. You get an opportunity to see kind of the entire golf course, which I think is a lot of fun sometimes in the coverage. It really, really only focuses maybe on five or six holes or, or down the stretch, just because those are kind of the highlight holes yeah. of the golf course. And, um, you know, just to keep everyone entertained. They, they don't really deviate too much, but I think at Riviera, we see the whole golf course and um, right. That 10th hole is, is pretty iconic. Yeah. Um, 
what what would you for for our listeners out there don't really know much about Riviera tenth hole is like three fifteen, but they'll play it somewhere from two seventy to three fifteen, probably over the course of the um, the four days, and we'll see people hitting six irons off the tee to people hitting uh, drivers, and it's one of those one of those holes that you could hit it in the in the greenside bunker and you might have a 5% chance of keeping it on the green. Yeah, exactly. Like it's just, it's just a wild hole and definitely a hole that I would love to play. I think it's, how you would know, you play it? Yeah. That, that was going to be my question for yeah. you. I was just fucking teeing it up for you, but I will. Yeah, but I'll uh, do it. Okay. So honestly, I think what I've seen mostly, I think the way it's kind of angled. So it's kind of like um, short left to back, right. I think I would probably hit like a three wood up the left side to create the angle for my, my second shot to be able to hit like that 50, 60 yard pitch, the length of the green. Mm -hmm. Um, So hitting it far enough where you open up the green, but not too far, um, you know, so hitting something in the 260 to 275 range and, um, and then kind of allowing a a somewhat straightforward pitch shot, I think is what I would do. And I mean, being a decent golfer, but not being a pro golfer by any means, I think if you could lie too, and you're on that front left part of the green, Mm-hmm. It's probably going to be a pretty successful hole. Um, mm-hmm. I think just not getting too greedy and and going after a pin if you don't have a perfect angle is is probably what you got to do. You know, I've been playing those Bridgestone golf holes that Tiger plays too, though, so a little extra zip them. on it. I'm it not too cool. worried. I'm not too worried about it. It'll, it'll nip nice. <laughs> but uh, how how would you play it? You know, I, I know you've you've watched this this tournament a bunch and, and I'm at, seen I'm all looking, different ways. I, I like I know the hole, but I don't you know remember it perfectly obviously um so i'm looking at it again now and i mean realistically it it would one depend on you know because if i'm if we're playing there right it's most likely the only time we're ever gonna play there and it would depend on how my round is going at that point right like if it's you know the 10th hole say i just finish you know if i just finish a front nine at it you know, even par or something along those lines. Like I felt like I was playing good golf and I had the opportunity to play a good score. Then it would really dictate what I'm going to do on that rather just be, you know, just take an iron off the tee and lay up or, you know, go for it. Cause obviously if I'm playing bad, then why wouldn't I just rip driver and just kind of go for it at that point. So not as uh, strategic as you, I would say, um, you know, I would hope we would have a caddy there, you know, with us trying to, guide us through it but i don't know what it's like there but uh yeah you know there yeah. there you go there's a little there's a little dive deep into my mindset when i'm going <laughs> to golf and it's pretty easy to pick the consequence go up and hit it so uh keep yeah. a free mind i guess right <laughs> yeah no yeah keep a free mind keep it simple i think right what's super interesting about the tenth is the fact that half the field's got to play it first thursday and friday yeah right exactly, right? <laughs> right if if you're, if you're struggling or you're playing really well, then maybe you probably, like you said, you go for it and kind of keep the momentum or try to switch the momentum. But yeah, it's your first one of the day. Um, I mean, if I'm first one of the day, right? Like I'm thinking I got to lay up, you know, just try to make it start your day with a par, just play it as safe as you can. Um, you know, you can hit a wedge close, right? You, you, you you can hit a lob wedge close. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah, that's my answer. My first hole of the day. Absolutely. it's nope. um it's i mean it's not it's a somewhat similar hole i mean not nearly as there's quite a bit of trouble but this this hole kind of reminds me a little bit of um i remember i was playing up i was playing up in the new england am at portland country club in portland maine and the first hole is like 290 and the fairway ends about 240 and then there's like a ravine and it goes up to the green and then surrounded on all sides it just drops off Oh, so if you wanted to go for it and hit a three wood or a driver and try to hit it on yeah. the green, if you don't hit it in the green on the green or like just in the rough, just yeah. outside, like you're making a bogey or a double and like, you're just hoping you can find it and you don't have to take yeah. it playable. And I remember I was playing up there and um, played the first round. It was like, there's some rain. So I was starting actually my second round and, and playing the first hole and I hit six iron off the tee off. I hit six iron off the tee and because it was a, a late round, that second round it was like five forty-five when I was teeing mm-hmm. off that that second round. There's dinner service going on in the background. I just got absolutely heckled for hitting a six iron off the tee. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't really matter because I hit a lob wedge pretty close and knocked it in for three to start my day. There you go. Um, right. 
and, and had a, had a pretty good afternoon, but, um, I just like that. That's kind of what I picture and, and no, it's not a perfect comparison, but yeah. right. We always try to compare it to holes that we've played or we've kind of interacted with. So that's kind of my comparison. So shout out How to Portland country course? club. Say that again. How is that course? Beautiful. I almost, I almost applied there. Almost it's, applied. it's special. It's swanky. That's what I got to say. It's swanky. I, I want to make the trip. I want to play there. And then uh, I think like right near there is Falmouth country. Club. Oh yeah. Which, yeah, they have the web.com event that this yeah, year. My, my buddy used to belong there. So I, I do. I need to get to Maine and play some golf. That's on my list. Yeah, get- but Portland Country Clubs, it's super cool. Um, I, there's no bad hole out there. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm always going to remember that, that place too, because mm-hmm. it's, it's a really well run tournament. And I remember I was like tied for 12th in the New England AM after a, a day and a half and then darkness. And then I came out to finish my second round. And I plugged one in the bunker, uh, like oh, first cool. tee shot of the day and shot like, I ended up shooting like three over that last day to miss, to miss the cut on the number. And I was like, so I'll just like always remember the fact yeah. that I had it rolling, had to go to bed the next day. And it's a like cluster fuck the next morning. Everyone's trying to hit golf balls. Yeah. on like this little range. And I just plug one in the face of a bunker, like 280 out. And it's like, if it, if it was like, it was dead summer. It was like, if it was middle of the day, I fly it over that bunker. No problem. Yeah. But it's first tee shot of the day and I plug it and I got no fucking shot the rest of the day. That's tough. <laughs> That's tough. That's yeah. Tough. So, um, but yeah, no great golf course. And, um, but to kind of jump back into Riviera, I think yeah. back, back nine, super awesome. Cool, cool finish down the stretch some good par threes and, um, really nice stretch of par fours kind of in the beginning of the back nine too, of just back and forth, some longer holes. Um, but yeah, just excited to, to get out there and, yeah. or, you know, get out there, geez, sit on my couch and watch the golf, even though I'm actually traveling to San Antonio this weekend. So hey, hey. not going to be watching a whole lot of golf, really probably, probably, uh, turn it on when we get to the house on Sunday afternoon and, and see the end of it. But, uh, probably mostly just going to be streaming it on my phone while I'm driving. So, you know, nice and safe. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong but, with that. Uh, Nothing. Yeah. Wrong. So you driving know, flying. We're we're driving. That's awesome. How long is that going to be? Eighteen hours. Uh, are you stopping anywhere? Yeah, we're stopping in Dallas. So we're going to do fourteen hours on Saturday, uh, and then we'll just have a a, a real short trip on a granted, Sunday. I mean, you're driving through the freaking <laughs> middle of the country, which is freezing right now. So there's nowhere to stop anyway. So yeah, I mean, fourteen hour drive. That's smart. Yeah, I mean it's it's supposed to get a little bit warmer, so like our trip on Saturday is going to mostly like in the 40s and 50, 40s, 50s, and then um, it's turning a little bit in Texas, and by the time Sunday comes around, it's going to be in the 60s when we get to Sunday. Uh, there you go. Yeah, but yeah, we're we're looking forward to me and me and two of my buddies are driving down. Then our other guy that's that's coming with us is flying in Monday morning, so excited to be able to you know take my work calls from from the outdoor patio and yeah. you know take the zoom calls with you know with the sun outside it's going to be a, a nice refreshing change i'll tell you that much it's nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so looking forward to that but you know when they're not when they're not out there at the riv they're they're probably just bouncing around la i know la is not in great shape right now from covid um but i think another reason why it's a big time stop on tour is right they get to go out and go to some nice dinners and do some of the things that LA and Hollywood and you know if you're if you're not staying there you're probably staying out west and you're probably staying on the beach in Malibu like it's just a spectacular place and and a lot going on so definitely excited to see some LA vibes out there and I think Eric's crafting up a nice uh, bogey proof picks cocktail of the week that's gonna um, exemplify kind of that LA vibe and that Mm -hmm. classic vibe of Riviera so I'm excited to, to get that post on the Instagram either uh, Friday or Saturday, most likely. So looking forward to maybe have one of those cocktails as well, but kind of a, let's, let's tee it up a little, an afternoon tea time at the Riv. Like this is, you know, this isn't a buddy's, uh, afternoon tea time. You've had an opportunity to invite three people from Hollywood to come and play with you. So you guys just finished up, up lunch and who's on the tee when you meet them on the first tee, who's your, who's your group? All right. I got two. Oh boy. Mark Wahlberg. Obviously, right? I mean, dude's a stud. He also is a golfer. So, I mean, I feel like that's just kind of a given. I'd probably go Matthew McConaughey. Don't know if he's a golfer. Probably not. He's too cool for golf. 
You didn't read his book clearly. Not yet. Is he a golfer? He was. He was. He was a single digit in in uh, middle school and high school. Sorry, M- must still be in the mail. So I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm in. Um. All right. Awesome. So McConaughey. Uh, uh, Wahlberg. Fuck. Who? Who would be my fourth? <laughs> you know. You know, in honor of the 25th anniversary, I'm going to go with my guy, Adam Sandler. Love his movies. Love his stuff. Happy Gilmore. Happy 25th anniversary yesterday. You know, that legendary video just coming back, coming out that he dropped of him doing the swing for the first, recording the first 25, the first time in 25 years, which I don't believe. I mean, you're telling me he didn't do a happy Gilmore swing <laughs> once in 25 years. Come on. Yeah, no, I think that'd be a really fun. I mean, granted, I feel like, Adam Sandler is a little out of the norm compared to the other two, but I think that would be a very fun time. Yeah, no, I I, I think that sounds like a fucking great group. Yeah, <laughs> uh, McConaughey. Mac- like, if you could just have, I mean, you might have to be in the cart six holes with each of them and just like oh, yeah. get the ex- get the experience of what it's like, like McConaughey just like whispering in your ear and like you know commentating your shots out there. Oh my like, god, That's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that would be a blast. And, um, I, the only three people I can think that might be better is, is my three people. All right. Let's hear, let's hear. I think, I think first off Denzel Washington. Yeah. I thought about it. I don't, I don't know if he's a golfer, but I, I would love to have Denzel Washington second Morgan Freeman. (laughs) Maybe (laughs) you're going to go there. (laughs) Maybe even a better, maybe even a better uh you know voice and just commentary i swear to god if your third isn't <laughs> uh ah <laughs> uh, geez this this one's a little bit difficult i'm going robert de niro where, where'd you think where'd you think i, I was hoping you were going samuel L. jackson at that <laughs> point man you kidding me that's a trifecta that's the best you could ask for yeah so <laughs> i think you're right i think that Samuel L. Jackson would have been a nice pick, but I think Robert De Niro, um, you know, if he could, if he could give me a couple speeches from some of the movies he's been in, yeah, I think would be a lot of fun. And I think too, all those guys just have such a history in, in movies and in television. I, I think they've been hanging out in Hollywood for a while. I think yeah. probably get a cool perspective of, of what it's like to, to be in yeah, right. and, and all that other good stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think, you know, we're, we're both going to have a good time out there in the afternoon. We're playing rib. We're going to dominate the golf course. We're going to have a, have a nice time with our, with our boys out there, but let's maybe let's, one day. Yeah. Maybe one day <laughs> there. I once did a, this is a wild story, right? Western new England. I'm doing tax returns for people yeah. in the city of Springfield. Wow. And this woman walks in and her husband ends up being the director of tennis at Riviera. <laughs> She's from Springfield. She lived out in LA for like 20 years. She was back taking care of her mom, comes in, gets her taxes done. And then I'm out there visiting my my roommate out in LA and I connect with him, never get to play, yeah. um, do whatever. So that was kind of the, the, the lost connection, like the Craigslist lost connection. That's Mike tough. trying to find his buddy there to, to go play uh, oh. Riviera, but it didn't work out. But yeah, wild, wild story doing some I think you just, like they helped you out, but you just went to Riviera to play tennis. Like you just <laughs> went there and just didn't golf. Uh, how funny would that be? How mad would you be? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's like going, that's like traveling down to Wingfoot and they tell you you're going to play golf and instead you play croquet or <laughs> you play, you play. Like, okay. But yeah, no, I get what you're saying. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. What do you say yeah, dive into picks? Say that again. They dive into picks. Yeah, let's let's dive in. Let's dive into the picks, and these will be able to. You guys will see them like we do on Instagram here with uh, bogey proof picks every week. Um, why don't you just kick us off, Joey, and then I'll and then I'll uh, I'll let the the fans know about the two hooligans that missed this week in their yeah. picks, and then finish yeah. off with mine. So obviously, these past few weeks, our listeners have known that I am a big Jordan Speed guy. For that reason, I think I'm just going to ride the Jordan Spieth wave. You know, I don't think it's a bad move the way he's been playing these past two, you know, these past two weeks in California. So 
you know, I, I, I think he has a decent pass at Riviera that I don't really know. And I don't really know how to look that up. I've tried. I just can't find anything. So I'm, I'm going to tell myself that he has a good pass here and that he's got a good chance this week. So I, uh, going with Jordan speed. He's my guy. Again, we're going to stick with him. Let him ride. Yeah. He's due. He's due. I'm pretty sure Jordan Spieth won an NCAA championship at uh Riviera when he was at Texas. Yeah. And that, I mean, all good for him more than I've ever done, but like, we're talking PGA tour, baby. I mean, it's still success on the golf course. Yeah. But I mean, the competition, I feel like is just, you Joe, know, Joe, think about it. Victor Hovland wins the USAM comes True. at Pebble True. beach. Comes the next year, low am at yeah. the U.S. Open at Pebble Beach, like top twenty. Like there is yeah. horses for point. courses is still a thing. Like you, you yeah, see those sight lines off point. the tee. It's a very good point, Michael. I, I withdraw that last statement, but <laughs> he, uh, he's good. Exactly, you proved my point. He has a good few, or he's had a good pass there. So big, yeah. big things to come. Okay, okay. I'm glad. I'm glad you talked yourself into being even more confident now. Um, okay. But Who are you going with? I am gonna go. I'm gonna go with Colin Morikawa, local oh guy, um, La Caneda Flint Ridge, a little north of Pasadena. Um, so really, you know, probably only 45 minutes to an hour away from from the Riv. Um, probably has played it a bunch of times. Went to Cal, though. I know, I know, Cal's in the Bay Area, but I I know they play tournaments down in Southern California and, you know, finish here in his first, his first pro start at, uh, at the Genesis. He was T26, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, but I think I saw that in golf channel earlier this week. So, right. He's taking a little time off after he, he played in the desert, mm-hmm. looking forward to watching him flush, flush the irons all week. Um, you know, he's going to make some birdies. Hopefully the putter, uh, works from inside three feet and, I would expect him uh, to be there at the end of the week, but the other two guys aren't here. Eric, he's riding uh, another Southern California guy, Max Homa, someone who's uh, played really well down the stretch here, really the last three, four weeks and had a bunch of success on the West coast last year with uh, three top tens. Um, just playing some good golf and and would expect him to enjoy seeing him up on the leaderboard. I, I like homies. Seems like a good dude and you know, solid player. He kinda he kinda see this uh this past week and one of the days he was like the first player in I wanna say like twenty years to uh, birdie all four of the par threes in one tournament. Like in one day. Yeah, so I mean that that's that's pretty cool. They asked him uh I think they asked him like, you know, what do you think? And he was just like sweet. <laughs> it's the most simple answer. Gotta respect it. But good pick, good pick, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, shout out to you out there. Um, and Mr. Fontaine, Mr. Fontaine going with one of the studs in pro golf right now, Justin Thomas, the guy who's had success here at, um, at Riviera. And I mean, it seems like he's had success everywhere, right? There's very few courses out there that, that don't fit his eye. Um, and he has proclaimed his love for Riviera. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, right even if he hasn't played great here in the past, he's had some success, but, you know, I think when anyone kind of proclaims how much they like something and how much they enjoy being out there in some capacity, that's going to filter into to how you operate and how much time you put into your practice rounds and the effort that you put forward kind of preparing for the tournament. And um, yeah. just with how outward Justin's been about it, I would, I would expect him to, to play well again this week. So Fontaine, that's a that's a classy pick, and we'd uh, we'd expect him to have a chance on on Sunday afternoon coming down the back nine. Yeah. But you know, now that we've kind of given our picks and and looking forward to this week, once the Genesis Genesis is open, we're headed your way, Joey. We're headed to Florida yeah. for the forward swing. Can you kind of is there anything that's kind of caught your eye here the the Florida swing that you're looking forward to? You know we've heard some rumblings about maybe having some fans out there, you know, what's, what's kind of Florida golf looking like right now. And, you know, you know, are you excited for any of those tournaments that are coming? Yeah. Up? Yeah. I mean, the most, you know, the biggest Florida tournament that I'm excited for, um, and, you know, I think Eric talked about it in a previous episode, but uh, Bay Hill, you know, I, I just a lot of history there. And, you know, over these past few winters with me down in Florida, 
working at an Arnold Palmer signature course, it's made me, and I think I've talked about this before too, it's made me appreciate Arnold Palmer a lot more and, you know, enjoy him a lot more and wish he was still with us. But uh, yeah, so, you know, it's always, you know, I always think that's a really fun tournament to watch and, you know, having played that golf course, not well, but playing that golf course was an experience in itself. And, you know, it's always fun to watch those courses on TV and think like, Hey, you know, this is what I did on that hole or anything along those lines. So, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be really fun to watch that again. And, you know, hopefully uh, have a, have a nice turnout. Hopefully they'll allow some spectators. And if they do, um, if, if I can, I'll maybe try to go and, and watch on, you know, one of the days if I can get it off, but uh, who knows what's going to happen. I don't think they've really announced that quite yet, but um, no, I'm, ex I'm excited for it. That's the biggest tournament that I'm excited for. Uh, what, what's the, what's the one with the, um, the golden bear trap, that one. Oh yeah. PJ, PJ national, the that PGA national it's yeah. It's it's Honda. 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 Yeah. Honda. Yeah. yeah. I would say that's, that's what I'm looking for. I, I too, I think it, that's like one of the strongest fields all year. Um, yeah. understandably so, right. It's a home game for the majority of the PGA tour. Exactly. Um, so they, they stay in their own beds and, um, play a really difficult golf course. I think. What course do they play the Valspar at? Uh, Innisbrook in Tampa. Innisbrook. Yep. Yep. I think it's actually in Palm Harbor, which is a little bit North of, yep. um, Tampa shout out to Tampa. Great, great spot. Been yep. winning some titles lately um something in the water down there or it's the movement of tom brady we don't know something like that <laughs> yeah my goal while i was down here i wanted to try to play all the you know courses on the florida swing and i just I haven't had the opportunity unfortunately but one day i'll get there give it time give it time hey hey that's i i would say there's a major there's a majority of you know people that love golf and watch the pga tour as religiously as we do their goal is to play all the courses on and tour and see how they stack up. So uh, definitely don't think that your, uh, your thinking is uh, unalike in any ways. No, I, I never said it was. I just, <laughs> I happen to know some connections, which is a good thing. Yes. Yeah, something like something about the, the PGA or something like that. Right. Yeah. Something, something for working with them or something. Yeah. Some association, yeah. something like that. I, I yeah. don't know, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. Looking forward to the, the Florida swing, but um don't really want to go too far ahead. We got a, we got a great tournament this week at the Genesis Invitational and excited to kind of finish off um, these West coast and the LA vibes at a, at a great golf course and a, and a fun event. So Joey, we appreciate you hopping on here and we'll have to, we're going to have to bust those other two guys balls. Absolutely. Like, well, I mean, clearly they're not making this a priority. I think at some yeah. point it's a discussion that we have to have, we have to have internally. Maybe yeah. we'll, maybe we'll put something on in like, know on paper and distribute it to the rest of the rest of the staff just so that they understand that you know really hey yeah. what are you doing on a wednesday night if you're not <laughs> if you're not talking you're doing working on a wednesday night unbelievable i don't care yeah. if it's spontaneous. are you kidding me you can't multitask <laughs> yeah i mean geez get the spreadsheets out on one side on one screen and and have the boys on another right easy so, as that i mean hey, no i was Joey? just say something crap <sighs> <laughs> I forget. Never mind. Don't worry. Until next oh, time, God. Michael. All right. Yep. We'll uh we'll uh we'll cut that one out or not. It's okay. Cheers. Add it. Cheers. <laughs>